Hello and welcome to another edition of Remy's Rave of the Day. I'm your host, Remy, or better known as Remington Afri, the youth minister at the Meadows Church of Christ, right here in Beaumont in the great state of Texas. The word that we're going to be raving about today is the word justification. Justification is the word that we're raving about today. When you do a count by book, that's every book in the New Testament. The book that comes in first place is the book of Romans. Romans records the word justification. 15 times. That's 15 times for the book of Romans concerning the word justification. The book that comes in second place is the book of Galatians. Galatians records justification eight times, and then the book of James records that word three times. You get a little bit deeper as Bible students, and you ask the question, where does this word occur the most in a book that has a few chapters in it? And the book that comes in first place is the book of Galatians, coming in at 33. 3.8% of the time, it is mentioning the word justification. 33.8% of the time, it is mentioning the word justification. The book that comes in second place is the book of Romans, coming in at 21% of the time, and the book of James coming in at third place regarding the word justification 17% of the time. A little deeper, you know, account by chapter, every chapter in the New Testament, and the chapter that comes in first place is Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 records the word justification six times. Six times for Romans chapter 3. What comes in second place is the Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 coming in at four times. Four times for Galatians chapter 2, and you get a little bit deeper asking the question, where does justification occur the most in a chapter that has a few verses in it? Where does it occur the most in a chapter that has a few verses in it? And Romans chapter 3 comes in first place, coming in at 16.5% of the time. It is mentioning the word justification, and what comes in second place is Galatians chapter 2 at about 10% of the time. James chapter 3 comes in last place coming in at about nine percent of the time so since we have romans chapter 3 coming in at 16.5 percent of the time regarding the word justification let's open up our bibles and let's see what paul is doing in romans chapter 3 and then eventually we'll go to galatians chapter 2 and james chapter 3 to do our very best to get these thoughts together because When we read about this word justification, it's going to seem like the Bible contradicts itself. But if we're going to say that the word of God is inspired by him, we're also saying that it has no mistakes. And so let's look at Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3. And notice, I want us to start in verse 23, Romans chapter 3, verse 23 Notice what it says. We know this pretty well. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. When he says all have fallen short, we know that to be, that's all of us in the world. But when Paul originally wrote that, he was referring to his original audience. He was saying all of y'all Jews and all of y'all Gentiles have fallen short of the glory of God. Because in Genesis, or not Genesis, but Romans chapter 1, that is addressed to Gentiles, saying you have no excuse not to know who God is. You could have looked at the creation, look at the world, look at the sky, and just have the thought of where could all this have come from. So therefore, Paul says, you are without excuse. Then Paul goes into Romans chapter 2, and he says, oh, Jews, by the way, you're not just guilty. So are you, and here is why. And so he gets into chapter 3, and he says, okay, everybody's guilty everybody. But he's going to make this transition, and notice what he says in verse 24 of Romans chapter 3. Verse 24, Romans chapter 3, he says, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. Let me pause here and let me make, make a note of this. When it comes to this special word, justification, We're just looking at the word justification as it is written in our English translations because it's a whole other search 
when you really dive a little bit deeper into this word justification. In other words, when you see the word justified, and you can even go back to verse 22 and 21 of Romans chapter 3, and you will see a word righteousness. Well, righteousness and justification are the same exact word, but we're not doing that type of a search. We're just looking at justification, where it appears in our English translations. I don't just want you to make a note of that. But you notice in verse 24, he says, you are guilty, but guess what? You are seen as justified all because of his grace, all because of what he has done. I think a good definition of the word justified, justification, is this idea of just as if I have never sinned. God can look at you that way if you decide to accept that gift, that gift being his son. We proceed and what he says in verse 26, verse 26 of Romans chapter 3, it says, for the demonstration I say of his righteousness at the present time so that he would be just, that's God being just, and the justifier, you know, those are those people, Back in verse 23, who are all guilty and who have all sinned. Verse 26, the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. You're going to notice this pattern about those who get to be justified. They have faith. They have belief. They have trust, but it is obedient type of a faith. We proceed. Verse 27, where then is boasting? It is excluded by what kind of law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. And you're going to see in verse 30, it says, Since indeed God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised, that's Jew and Gentile, through faith is one. So you're just noting the fact how, okay, when it comes to this word justified, number one, everyone is guilty, but you can become justified if you have this one thing. And this one thing is obedient faith, and it's apart from the works of the law, the law of of Moses. You can even back up to verse 20 of Romans chapter 3, verse 20, and it says, because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. In other words, we didn't know what sin was or that we were lawbreakers until we came to the law of Moses and realized, oh man, we are not perfect. We cannot make it on our own. We need God's help. And then that's when you impart the idea of grace, verse 24. And guess what? One can be justified, not through the law of Moses, not through th those works, not by man's works, but by the works of God, by his redemption redemptive work, which is found in Christ. But in order for one to accept that type of a grace, guess what one has to have? The idea of obedient faith. That goes back to verse number 28. But we remember how we said that, the, that there's these other books that talk about justification. In fact, one of them was Galatians. It was Galatians chapter 2. And so let's turn over there, Galatians chapter 2, and you're going to see the exact same thing Though it's called by a different book, it's a different audience, it's a different problem, but you're just going to notice the connection here. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Notice this. It says, nevertheless, chapter 2, verse 16 of Galatians, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. That's exactly what Romans 3, verse 28 said. But through faith in Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, since by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. You have all these words being repeated in just one verse. But we have to keep in mind when Paul says works, works of law, law of Moses, he's referring to things like circumcision. That was told in Galatians chapter 2. The food laws, Galatians chapter 2, where Peter saw his Jewish brethren, and he says, oh no, I'm done eating with you Gentile brethren, because here comes my Jewish friends. If they see me eating with you, they're going to condemn me to my face, if you will. That's talking about the Mosaic calendar, Galatians chapter 4. He says, Paul says, you can't be justified by those types of things. The only thing you can be justified 
is by faithful obedience. And Paul in Galatians chapter 3 is going to say, you know what? God already made the decision a long ago that that was going to be the way in which man can be saved and which man could be justified. In other words, Galatians 3 verse number 8 says, the scripture foreseeing, notice that word, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith Preach the gospel for him to Abraham, saying, All the nations will be blessed in you, even though he is going to bring the law of Moses eventually. Paul's argument here to the Galatian audience is this just because the law of Moses came into play and what it needed to be for that particular time, it doesn't mean that the promise which was made to Abraham was going to be nullified. It was going to be forgotten. It's thrown out the window. No, that promise, if you will, supersedes the law of Moses because of what he meant when he said to Abraham, in your seed, being Christ, verse 16 of Galatians 3, all the nations are going to be blessed. All the nations are going to be justified. But we have a problem because the third book that came in third place and the majority of these findings, the findings of justification, when we did the count by book, when we did the idea of, okay, where does this word occur the most in a chapter with a few verses in it? You had James chapter two. You had a little bit of James chapter two thrown in here. And here's what I mean. If you go over to James chapter two, James chapter two, if I remember correctly, the word justified occurs about, oh, three times. J, uh, James chapter 2, I think you know where I'm going with this, James chapter 2, and notice what it says. James chapter 2, oh, at about verse number, I would say verse 21 through 26, and I'll give you a summation of that. Here's what James is doing. He's trying to communicate to his audience that you are saved by works. Now, again, that seems like a contradiction, doesn't it? You have James 2 saying you're saved by works. But you had like Romans 3 and Galatians 2 saying you're not saved by works. But we have to keep in mind the original audience, the original book. What's the problem in all those books? And even when we find that out, we got to figure out how the Bible coincides together, how it uh, harmonizes together. So here's what it is. I've said it repeatedly. When Paul says... In Galatians 2 and Romans 3, when he says works, he's referring to the law of Moses. Those works. When James chapter 2 brings up the word works and he says, you are saved by works, he's talking about works of obedience, not works of merit, which is the law of Moses. He says, you are saved by works of obedience because he's going to bring up two people in James chapter 2, Abraham and Rahab. And James says, look at their actions. They had faith, number one. They had trust. They had belief. But there needed to be something to confirm their belief, to back up their belief, to confirm, to verify. Do you truly trust him? Do you truly believe in him? Do you truly have faith in him? And their answer, Abraham and Rahab, is going to be like this. Yeah, we do. Okay, now demonstrate that then by your actions. And with Abraham, he was going to sacrifice his son. With Rahab, he helped, or she helped the spies with throwing out the scarlet, uh, the scarlet, a little... Uh, scarf out the window, it was red and everything, and so on and so forth. That's them by their actions demonstrating, I got faith in God. And so that's why James chapter 2 can be something like this, that you have faith and you have obedience, and that's going to help someone become justified, just as if that person never, ever sinned. And God can look at you in that kind of a way. Here's what we're saying when it comes to this word justified. Number one, everyone's guilty of sin, but you could be seen by the eyes of God. You could be seen as if you've never sinned. And the only way you can be seen by God in that kind of a way is obedient faith, not faith in your works, not faith in your efforts, not faith in your doings as if oh, I deserve to go to heaven or I have uh, earned it, you know, that kind of an idea. No, but it's by the grace of 
God by responding to that grace, responding, accepting Jesus, receiving him, believing in him, obeying him, that kind of terminology. And then when I do that, when I'm a practicing Christian, I'm practicing out my faith, guess what I am? I am justified in the eyes of Almighty God. This has been episode number 66, looking at the word justification, justified. Please consider liking and sharing this video as well as liking and sharing our page. We are the Meadows Church of Christ. We are located at 9195 Dishman Road, 9195 Dishman Road. Please come see us Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m., Bible class at 11 a.m. We meet back on Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. And we meet in the middle of the week at 6.30 p.m. We love to see a hug on you and care for you. I've been your host, Remy, or better known as Remington Afri, the youth minister at the Meadows Church of Christ, right here in Beaumont in the great state of Texas. This has been a Wednesday edition of Remy's Rave of the Day. Continue to have a great Wednesday to continue to have a great rest of your week. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow around 3 p.m. where we're, we're going to be raving about another word on Remy's rave of the day. Have a great rest of your day. This has been episode number 66, raving about justification. Have a great rest of your week. Godspeed.